they have a huge misconception that the people in China like feel deprived of freedom and lorded over by some fascist dictator and in China people are just focused on I mean the people that I know which is a subset of the Chinese population which is mostly two sets I guess it's relatively educated people involved in the tech economy and then I know people in my wife's home village in Anhui province who are rural farmers, right? But they're Han Chinese rural farmers. So I don't have a lot of friends like among the Muslim population in Xingang province where a lot of unpleasant things seem to be happening, right? But among the segments of China I have anything to do with, people are very nationalist as much as in the US. They believe China is the best country in the world and things are better off there than, than anywhere else. They think the government has pluses and minuses, but overall they're happy because it's been making China, you know, richer and richer for their for their whole lives. And China is the most capitalist country on the planet. So I mean the people there that I know are mostly concerned with how do I make more money, how do I start a new business and, and make it successful? And very family oriented. Like how do I take care of my parents and, and my kids? And they are not focused on, on politics. They would rather not think about politics or, 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 deal, or deal with it at all. They don't see the government as very intrusive into their lives. The thing is, the Chinese government, they want to support capitalist and entrepreneurial activity. They want to support people having you know, robust, happy, and healthy family lives. As long as you ignore politics, it doesn't feel heavy-handed in, in any way. If you try to do political organization or if you put like in Chinese language something on the internet that's against the government, then you'll run into some unpleasant things from the Chinese government, right? But as long as you avoid that, which most people there are very willing to do, then very comfortable life, rapidly increasing wealth and a really in healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem. Like if you want to do a software startup, there's probably nowhere better in the planet than Beijing. If you want to do a hardware startup, there's nowhere better in the planet than in than Shenzhen. Now in my wife's home village in Anhui province, there's not a lot of tech people, but so many people have made themselves rich with like real estate remodeling or property companies or, or something something like that. So. I don't think people understand how capitalist and entrepreneurial the whole vibe in China is, nor how nationalist the Chinese are, like really believing and feeling like they're on, they're on top of the world, right? Hmm. And like historically, 5,000 years, most of which they were more advanced than the rest of the world, they had a few hundred years of being backwards, and now they're taking their the rightful position at the top again, right? That's and interesting. So that's More capitalistic than America. By far, yeah, sure. Explain that. Well, Americans are fat and lazy and comfortable, right? Fat Ch cats. Ch Chinese are like... Hungry. Yeah, they're, they're, they're hungry and they're, and they're rising. But I think Chinese have been merchants and capitalists since forever, right? Yeah. So, I mean, th yeah. that's really in... That, that, that's, that's in the cultural DNA to, to, to a huge extent. And... Deng Xiaoping in the 1980s, when they started like, you know, communism and capitalism with Chinese characteristics, that was way more of like a quiet revolution than people outside China realized. Like it, it wasn't formally a revolution, but I mean, it was an utter change in the way things are, well, the, way things are the way things are organized. It's really what's happened there since the 80s is really nothing to do with Maoism, even though Mao, Mao's face is, is, is on the money. And I think people think China is communist in some way they can understand, but it's, uh, it's not about that anymore. It's a new form of, of government and a new type of like state-directed capitalism, which we just have no model for in the West. And one of the beauties of that system is, you know, they're able to plan 5, 10, 20, 30 years in advance in a very coherent way. Whereas in electoral democracies, which I still prefer emotionally being an American, but in electoral democracies, 
it's hard to do planning beyond the election cycle, right? And that's a problem. China is into AI, they're into solar power and, and, and renewable energy, they're into robotics, they're into nanotech, and they're able to plan these things decades in advance in, in a coherent way. And that, that's, that's a very significant advantage, right? China is run by engineers, whereas the US is run by lawyers, <laughs> and the UK is run by morons, right? So, so I, I, well, US is too, right? which is a problem though, right? Yeah. I, I mean, so Xi Jinping, very smart guy, and he's got like a, a whole organization of smart engineers around him who are like figuring out the optimal way to design the society and, you know, what disciplines do the universities fund students to be in, which state-owned companies and which disciplines get money. So, you know, in, in Guangdong province, now in many parts of China, if a real estate developer wants to develop a new office complex, there's strong pressure from the government to have a couple AI robotics or advanced technologies in that office complex. So this pushes the people, the property developers, to fund AI companies so, the, so they'll have an AI company in their office complex, right? So the, right. the government just does all sorts of... It's probably not the most efficient use of capital, but it gets their agenda Yeah, yeah, pushed. so they're, they're very complex. It's 1.5 billion people. It's, and there's still corruption and there's a lot of inefficiency there. But the government is very clever at figuring out, like, within the system we have now, how do we nudge things in the, in the direction that we need to go in? And it's not as top-down as you would think. So, like, this mechanism I just described now, on the one hand, there's some inefficiency. On the other hand, it's encouraging, you know, the holding companies that own property funds to be thinking about AI, and then it pushes the AI investment local in that sense, right? Okay. So it is, is very subtle, but the thing is they're embracing AI, robotics, nanotech, renewable energy, biotech, all these things in a huge way that the West can't even imagine. And they're putting a significant percentage of GDP into these advanced technologies, whereas the US is like fussing about building border walls and UK is, is like fussing about how do you deal with tariffs after a, a, a no-deal Brexit or something. China isn't chasing its tail around in circles like that. China is thinking like, how do we dominate AI, nanotech, biotech, and robotics 25 years from now? <laughs>